Hey there, I'm Sean C. Davis, and actually it's really cold in here. Okay, much better. Now, recently I had written a custom script and I wanted the output of that script to be sent to a specific Slack channel. And what I found is that there are so many capabilities in working with the Slack API that doing something very simple, like sending a message from a script to a channel in Slack takes quite a bit of navigating of everything that's going on to understand how to just send this one message. And in the end, the process is actually quite simple and really only has three main components. First, we have to set up and configure our application. Second, we have to learn how to work with what Slack calls the block kit. And then third, we can actually write the script and interact with their SDK to send the message. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new Slack app. You can start by going to api.slack.com slash apps and then click this create new app button and we can choose to either start from scratch or from an app manifest. We're gonna start from scratch for the example and we can give the thing a name. I'm just gonna call it test app for now and then pick the appropriate workspace to put it in. I have one that's just for me and so I'm going to say create app and now we have to configure this application. But first we'll add incoming webhooks. Let's turn these on and then come down here and we will add a new webhook to our workspace. We're gonna choose the channel. I'm gonna choose a channel called test, which is just a private channel I use to test Slack applications. And the thing is you can actually send your message to different channels along the way. So just pick something to start with and you can always change that later on. Okay, next come over to OAuth and permissions. There's a token here that we're gonna come back to, but for now we wanna give it some permission. So we have to add a few scopes. By default, we have incoming webhook scope, but we have to actually add a few more and we're going to add them in this bot token scopes section. So first we're going to add chat write, and then we are going to add chat write public. And then we have incoming webhook already. So we are all set. Okay, and as we're doing this, you probably see this big scary banner pop up here. It's basically saying, when we created the application, we had already installed it, and so we now need to reinstall the application. So go ahead and click this link, and it's basically just gonna ask you to pick this channel again. And again, it doesn't really matter. You can always change this later. Okay, and next, let's go back to basic information and make sure we've got everything filled out. So if you scroll all the way down here, you see this display information. This is where if you wanna add an icon, an app name, a description, this is a really good place to do it. This will control how it shows up. For example, if I go to my Slack instance here, you can see this is a bot and I've got a logo. And then we also get, if I click on this, I get an about section and I see a description here as well. So this will, this will really help with, especially if you're gonna share it or distribute it, it's good to have that information. The other thing I'll point out while we're here is that you should see a message that says you've added an integration to the channel that you selected when you installed the app. And if you're following along, you should actually see two of them because if you recall, we installed it and then we reinstalled it after we changed the permissions. With that, let's jump over to our code. So in my code base over here, all I really have is this singular index.mjs file and I'm using mjs so I can use import over require. And you can see there's not much else going on in this project. Okay, now let's install our dependencies. So we're gonna install the Slack SDK and that is at Slack slash bolt. And then let's also install .env so that we can save our environment variables somewhere. And while that's happening, let's go ahead and create a file in the root of our project to store these environment variables. So .env. And if you haven't already, probably wanna ignore this file in Git because this is gonna have sensitive data. So we, here we are going to add Slack signing secret and Slack bot token and Slack channel. Now I know already I can set Slack channel to test. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So the first one, Slack signing secret, you can find down here in app credentials, which is under basic information. And the Slack bot token you can find in OAuth and permissions. And that is this value right here. So go ahead and copy both of those, paste them in your .env file, and then save this file. I'm gonna do this off camera for a second. 
By the way, before we get back into writing the script, something I failed to mention before is that the reason I use an environment variable to specify the channel is because it tends to make it really easy to switch which channel we are posting that message to. And that's why when I went back to saying we installed it to a particular channel, if we have the right permission level, we can still change that channel that we send it to within the script itself. And so you often want a different channel to test in than you're gonna use in production. And so that's why I use an environment variable because I can quickly change it locally without actually changing any of the code that might be running in production. All right, now the second component that I mentioned at the beginning of the video is that we have to understand how blocks work. Blocks are basically the building blocks of the content that we're going to use to craft a visually rich message in Slack. And the easiest way to do this and to see what's going on is to go to app.slack.com slash block kit builder. And you don't need any of this other stuff here. If you just go to this URL, which I'll put in here just like that, and I will link it in the description below, you're gonna get redirected somewhere and you're gonna see that you've got this preview automatically. You've ha you have all of these options for blocks on the left side. And as you click them, you can add and remove things over here. So you get this interactive preview. And then on the right side of the screen, you see this JSON payload, and that's what you're going to send to Slack to craft that visually rich message. So now this is obviously a very elaborate set of blocks, and we're not going for anything that's super interactive here. We really just wanna post a simple message. We don't need any feedback or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal some code that I've already have written, paste it over here, and just show you how we can, we can do something super simple, like, Notify that I have a new post published, link to that post, and show the author of that post. And as I make, I'll make this a little bit bigger here to show you that the syntax for these markdown sections is a little bit different. First of all, you see that blocks is an array here. It's an array of objects. Each object is going to have a type. These types can be something like section, divider, context, etc. That'll change the style a little bit. And when you get down to a markdown section, notice that the markdown looks a little bit different than it might in other applications if you're used to writing markdown. So emojis come through with a surrounded by colons, and then links don't look like typical markdown links. And the thing I would suggest is to simply just use this builder and the items on the left build what you want, see the JSON output that it gives you, and then we can move that over to the script. Okay, and with that, we're ready to write some code, so let's rearrange the windows. I'm actually gonna pull up my Slack instance here so we can see this happening in real time, and let's get our script going. So first, we are going to import Slack from Slack slash Bolt, and then we're also going to import .env from dot env here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually load our environment variables into our process.env object. So let's do that by saying dot env dot config. Great. And now we can create a new Slack API client. So we're gonna say constant and we'll just call it app. And we're gonna say Slack dot app. And then we have to give it our credentials in here. So first is signing secret. And we're gonna get that from our environment, Slack signing secret. And then we have our token. And that's again, process.env because we set it as an environment variable. And that's Slack, Slack bot token. All right, and then usually I wanna make sure that this looks okay and I don't get an error. So let's log the app. Let's run the script again. And notice that if I get output something that looks like it is a class instance, then I am good to go. I should have what I need here in my app object. So what we can really do now is we can say await app.client. This is gonna be way simpler than it seems like, especially if you've dug through the documentation before. It seems like you have to go through all this interactivity and you've gotta set up your own server to be able to send a message, and you don't. You just have to do app.client.chat.post message, and then we've gotta give it this object so it knows what to expect. So the first thing is the token, which is process.env.slackbot token. We're gonna give it our channel. 
which remember we set as Slack channel. And then we're gonna give it some text. We can say this is a test. And for now, let's stop there and let's see if we can actually do anything. Okay, so I just tested this and it didn't work. And the reason it didn't work was because I'm using a private channel for my test and I hadn't added the application to the channel. And it seems a little bit goofy because we had these two messages that said, added an integration to this channel, but I didn't add the actual app user to the channel. And so what I did was I clicked on the name of the app and then I said, add app to a channel. And then I selected my channel in here. And then I saw test app was added to this channel. And now I should be able to run this. So if I run my node index.mjs and we see immediately we get this message posted in here. So that's great. That's already a big success. You can see that, look, this is not very much code and it's really simple to just be able to send that message right to the channel. Now, just for a test, let's go ahead and define some blocks so that we can send a little bit of a richer message. So maybe we make a new constant up here called blocks and we'll make that an array and then let's come back over here to our example, copy the, just what's inside the array, since I've already added the square brackets here, I'm gonna paste that in, and then we will send this block right here, add this blocks as the property. And if you're not familiar with this syntax here, this is the same as saying this. And so this is just a shortcut here. So blocks, let's go ahead and run it again. And then while this happens, Look at this, we actually get a, we get the, the message we thought we should get. So now you can take this and you can play around with it however you want. You can build some rich blocks over here. For example, let's do something that's a little bit more complicated. Look at, there's, there's some columns in here as well. So let's take that. Maybe we replace our blocks here. And we're gonna have to get rid of the, cause we want blocks to just be the array inside. There, save that. Go ahead and post it again. Let's come back to Slack and we see it looks exactly the same. So now you have the foundation of what you need to be able to do to just post simple messages to Slack. You can have an app. You don't need to host that app on a server. It doesn't need to be reactive in any way. You can just have it run inside scripts. Wherever you can run Node.js, you can post messages to Slack. It's as simple as that. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Use the comments section below if you have questions or want me to dig deeper into interactions with the Slack API. Subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you next time.